Welcome to A Live with Al, a show about stuff on the internet, because there's not enough of that. Now, here's your host, Al, Alexandria Morgan, who sometimes goes by Al. Thank you and good evening, or afternoon. Time does not really matter anymore, but welcome to A Live. I'm your host, Alexandria Morgan, coming at you live from my kitchen, which I've covered with a bed sheet, because it ain't that aesthetically pleasing. And yes, I am wearing a wig again, not as a form of escapism from myself because I've been isolated, but because wigs are fun and it hides my greasy hair because I still have not gotten dry shampoo. We're also not going to talk about the amount of wigs that are currently in my Amazon cart because quarantine has led me to some weird places. All right, now for today's breaking news and top stories. In Georgia, as they begin their phases of reopening, movie theaters are set to open again soon. Because the first place you'd want to go after staring at a screen for months is another room where you can just stare at a screen. In a press briefing last week, President Trump, I mean Trump, insinuated that maybe the cure to coronavirus would be to inject ourselves with disinfectant or UV rays. I wish someone would shove some sunshine up his- The Pentagon recently released footage of unidentified aerial objects basically confirming the existence of aliens, or extraterrestrials, and no one gave a flying saucer about it because we got our own problems to deal with without adding people from another world. Maybe we're just immune to bad news, unfazed by anything shocking, or maybe the mystery of aliens was the true allure. Conspiracies are always more exciting than the truth, so now aliens are just mundane, boring even. In other news on the supernatural, ghost sightings have been reported across the nation in the likes of likes, DMs, snaps, and even text messages, as men and women are seeing a resurgent of people they thought had ghosted them. Now remember, if you or a loved one experience this phenomenon, do not indulge in their boredness and thirstiness. If it takes a pandemic for you to get a text back, he's probably not that into you. With several states extending their lockdown and stay-at-home orders, protests are being reported across the nation, with people who claim that they've just had enough of COVID-19 and the coronavirus. Ironically, these gatherings are bound to statistically produce more of the coronavirus. Our team here at Live With Al has exclusive footage of interviews with these protesters at a protest that took place in Secaucus, New Jersey, outside of a TJ Maxx. Their cause? The fight to get TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and Home Goods declared essential businesses. Do I look at you or do I look at the camera? Oh, yeah, I'm a member of the Maxinistas for Freedom. We demand the freedom to buy reasonably priced throw pillows that are stylish but as i said reasonably priced that tj maxx marshall's and home goods can only provide i know that there's online shopping but it's really not the same and all i really know how to do is get on the facebook i need my new seasonal bath decor how will people know it's may if i don't have seashells on the little upper part of the toilet and a new life's a beach sign and my god my kids are driving me crazy now for a segment I like to call, Excuses You Can Use to Dodge a FaceTime Call or Politely Explain Why You Ignored One. In this day and age, FaceTime is the way to communicate, and people are doing a lot of it. When everyone is home and available, it can seem hard to dodge FaceTime calls without seeming rude. So we here at Live With Al have compiled a list of excuses for you. I was doing my taxes. I was reorganizing my nail polish collection in alphabetical order by their names and titles. I was thinking of new potential nail polish names. My personal favorite is Pick This Pink. You're spending way too long picking out a color and the nail technician is getting antsy. I was taking a bath. I was having a breakdown after trying to do a workout on Instagram Live. I was taking another bath. I was giving my cat a bath. Four hour power nap. Six hour power nap. Five hour anger nap. I was cleaning out my closet and I got distracted by this picture of the rock that I found. I momentarily did not have the emotional capacity to talk to another human being. And now, to spice up your Cinco de Mayo, we got a few margarita recipes to help you party in quarantine. And remember, it's not drinking alone if your cat's there. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today I'm going to show you a great Cinco de Mayo margarita, especially poignant for this year, the Corona Rita. Now this happened to be my favorite margarita for years before Corona was ever anything but a beer. You're going to start with a cup. I like this fancy one that I got from West Elm before the economy was bad. Then you're gonna put that cup down because first thing is actually cutting a lime wedge. Nope, not a good idea, not gonna do that. We're gonna do this the safe way. Then you're gonna take that lime wedge and ring it around your cup. Then you're going to take sea salt and put it onto a plate or cutting board. The grinder on my sea salt is not working so I'm gonna use less aesthetically pleasing sea salt in a can like this. Still does the trick though. 
and I think I got lime juice in my paper cup. Then you simply salt your rim up. Maybe I should have used a plate because it's kind of sticking to the cutting board that has also lime juice on it. Act like you're a DJ in Ibiza spinning tracks. And you put the cup back down for later. Take a few ice cubes. Add one and a half ounces of orange juice. Two shots of tequila. We're in a pandemic, don't judge. Three tablespoons of lime juice. And if the time it's taking to squeeze the lime is getting on your nerves, store-bought is fine. Next, you're going to add your sweetener. I'm using a simple syrup replacement that contains monk fruit, but agave or stevia would work as well. Just wait. And I like to just throw that lime in there so you can really get all the flavors of it in. Now add some ice cubes to your glass. And now, the favorite part. Okay, I'm really afraid that this is gonna go everywhere. Um, maybe I use a, a towel. I'm gonna shake it like a Polaroid picture. How do people do this without spilling? Now, pour your healthy margarita. And make sure to leave room for this next part. Take your Corona. No! Since I couldn't put the Corona in there for the aesthetic look, I'm just gonna use this little umbrella that I found that I think I took from a restaurant a couple years ago. Nope, that's getting wet and I kind of like that as a souvenir. So we're just gonna have it garnished with the lime wedge. That is really good. Oh my gosh. For a moment that this touched my lips, I forgot I'm about to say the world. And there you have it, my friends, the perfect Corona Rita for Cinco de Mayo. I'm gonna go finish this margarita and clean up my disaster of a kitchen. Be sure to follow me on Instagram to DM me stories or ideas for the next Alive With Al, and I'd love to hear more ideas in the comments as well. I hope you guys are staying safe, staying groovy, and I'll catch you on the flip side.